Actually dropping my chair down there, look a little bit high in the uh, in the frame. It is Monday, the 4th of January. Carl is here, 2016. Uh, Lee is here. Lee, I've got your text. Um, I just got it a minute ago. I've been I've been dead busy, I've not had a chance to call you, but I'll give you a call after this. Nina's here, Barbie's here. Uh, hey, hey Kate is here. Uh, Sammy Sue is here. Loads of people are here. It's the first scope of 2016. Give me some hearts. How is everybody doing? Did you have a, uh, a fantastic new year? Um, it was good, mine was all right. I basically stayed in <laughs> drinking coffee uh, with the family though, not on my own scoping. Yeah, Lee, I will definitely uh, I will definitely call you or, or drop your text after this, buddy. Um, no problem. Uh, Carl is here as well. Um, so good to see everybody. Let's just give people a few minutes to join as usual. Um, by all means, share this with your friends on Facebook, on Twitter. Let them know that it's going on. The more, the merrier. Uh, tonight we're gonna be looking at becoming a morning person. Um, look at that beaming smile. I just can't help it. I can't help it. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of wins today. That I'll tell you about in a minute because we we're talking about goal setting um, on the last Periscope, and we'll kind of recap a little bit on that tonight as well. Um, and then also, I'm going to challenge you guys at the end of this scope. Um, to a 21 day challenge with me because one of my goals is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, I've tried it before, I've done it for a bit, I've then gone back to not doing it and hopefully in 2016, yeah, I'm going to kind of get used to doing it regularly so that um, we can hopefully, well I can be more productive, get more done and hopefully if you guys do it as well um, and if it suits you, it might help you become more productive as well. So I can see people sharing it, Lee's sharing it on Facebook, sharing it on Twitter. Um, thank you very much, appreciate that. And um, for everyone watching the replay as well, I'll say this at the start because I always forget, I appreciate you so much as well. Um, you can't comment or share it and do all the things that you can see these guys doing. Um, but if you are watching it on Periscope, you, well, you've got 24 hours to watch the replay on Periscope. So if you're watching it on Periscope, hello. If you're watching it on YouTube, because I upload all my scopes to YouTube, then subscribe. Um, it's the Act On This TV channel. It's a website that I run for actors called actonthis.tv. Um, but all the Periscopes go onto that YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, you'll always get notifications when new ones get uh, get uploaded. Gemma, I just saw Gemma Green is here as well. Missed a few other people who, uh, who popped on before that. Um, but uh, yeah, Happy New Year, says Lee. Happy New Year, everybody. So are we, give me some hearts, if we're going to make 2016 all of our best year ever for every single person. I put a thing out on Instagram the other day going, you know, sort of share this if you're going to make 2016 the best year ever. I know everybody's kind of putting stuff out like that, but um, but I really mean it and I want to help you guys with these periscopes and the other stuff that we've all got going on. Um, with the Facebook group that we've got for these scopes as well, Bulletproof Actor. If you're an actor, particularly come and join. If you're not an actor, then we'll adopt you anyway, but go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Bulletproof Actor and then request uh, to join. But yeah, 2016 is on, says Sam. Vishal, I hope 2016 is on for you, just so you pop up. Yeah, baby, says Nina. <laughs> it is, it's on, honestly. And um, and I'm massively excited, because today, for those who are, who are regulars on these scopes, people will know that for the last seven months, I've been working on a mindset course um, for actors specifically. It's a confidence, what I'm calling a confidence installation course. It is the most in-depth confidence installation course. Um, literally, I'm sure that probably exists on this planet. It's particularly tailored for actors, but it's suitable for kind of everybody. Um, I w might even come out with a general one that's not just tailored for actors at some point. But this took me seven months to do. And today, I finally gave the registration link to a few select people who watch these scopes. You know who, I, who you are. They said you know who I am. You know who you are. Um, and a few people have signed up already, so thank you so much. It's going to go public on, it's going to launch on January the 18th, which apparently is, is Blue Monday. It's called Blue Monday. Apparently, it is the most depressing day of the year, January the 18th. So I wanted to launch it then to give people a little bit of hope, um, you know, that, that it doesn't have to be depressing. Um, but yeah, January the 18th, Blue Monday. Um, apparently, it's where everyone's gone back to work. They've kind of got no money. They've don't, maybe it's not a good time to launch a product, then, is it? <laughs> if people haven't got any money to buy it. Um, but yeah, they're kind of depressed. The Christmas is gone. They've got nothing to look forward to. Um, so excited for Bulletproof Actors says, Gem, well done, sir, uh, Vishal. Thank you. Evening, Kim. Um, thanks for joining us. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. That was one of my 2015 goals, was to get that finished for, well, for the new year. Um, it was a goal that I kind of pushed back and back and back a little bit, but um, I finally managed to get it all done. It's more or less finished, today's the 4th of January, so we're only a little bit over. Um, like I say, it's gonna launch to everybody on the 18th. So today, um, by the way, before we start, did anybody set their goals? Did you, did you use 
um, the uh, the action acronym that we went over on the last scope. I am plugged in, Kim. I'm on airplane mode, and I've got coffee. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. And um, did you use that? Yeah, action. Um, the action two A's, wasn't it? It stood for actionable, aligned, challenging, time-bound, inspiring, objective, and narrow. They were what we had to make our goals. A lot of people use like SMART as their acronym. I've used that for a few years, but this was the first year that I used the action. That's from Michael Hyatt. Um, Gemma says yes. Awesome. Oh, I'm not seeing that scope. Watch it, Lee. Go to actsonlist.tv, click on Periscope in the menu, um, and you can watch it, buddy. It's pretty good. Well, I think it's pretty good. I hope it's pretty good. It was about 55 minutes. There's probably a lot of waffle in there, but there is some good content there as well, and it will help you set your goals um, for 2016. It's something that I do religiously now every year and has made a big impact in my life. Not yet, but plan time tomorrow at Trafford Centre to have some time to myself and do it. Awesome, Sam. Definitely do it. Yeah, and you do need time. Don't rush this. If you've only got like 10 minutes, don't bother block a day out. I take a day out. So I did New Year's Eve um, where I do mine. I set seven to ten goals for the year. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got, some, I've got some awesome ones to, you know, to work at um, for this year. And then when I start boxing one off, I'll add another one on, you know, and, um, and just continue from, uh, from there on out. One of my goals I'm going to share with you tonight is, and I've tried this before, okay, is to start getting up a lot earlier than I currently do because I've, I've been through a period in my life where I was getting up at 6 a.m. Um, and it was great, you know, it was really, really good. Um, I love getting up early for the same reason, though, that I love staying up late. And give me some hearts if you, if you resonate with this. I love feeling like I've got the world to myself, like no one else is up, no one else is around. It's almost like I'm getting, not like getting one over on the world, but it's almost kind of like I've got a bit of an advantage. Like I'm like, right, I'm working when no one else is, or I can be peaceful, there's no distractions. Um, and that's why I stay up very late. So last night I stayed up editing a video for Bulletproof Actor until 3.30 a.m. Now that meant that I didn't get up till 11.30 a.m. this morning. Now if I'd have gone to bed at say 10, then I'd have been able to save those five and a half hours and just got up earlier. Now it kind of doesn't make that much difference in terms of my productivity, but getting up late, I don't know about you, but getting up at half 11 doesn't make me feel particularly good at all about myself okay I love to kind of feel like I'm winning and getting up half 11 even though I was up till the early hours doesn't really make me feel like I'm winning that much so one of my goals and I did this when I was in LA I was in LA in December uh, for some some business stuff going on out there which is quite exciting um, and I was up at 6 a.m. every single day because it was amazing. It was easy to get up over there at 6 a.m. because the sun was coming up over the mountains. Um, I was staying in a gorgeous place. It was a bit different to rainy, dark Manchester, but it made me feel great. I felt like I had so many hours in the day. You know, by 10 o'clock, I'd done so much because I got up at 6 that I thought, oh my God, I've still got the rest of the day. You know, so I got another 12 hours or so until I go to bed. I was going to bed about 10, half 10, so not that much earlier, but it just made me feel so, so much better. Um, about getting up so early. So tonight we're looking at how to become a morning person if you want to. You never told us you went to LA. I, I, is, that, is, that, is that a joke? Yeah, it's just joking. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Lee, I definitely did. I mentioned it about a thousand, a thousand times. I thought for a second you, you didn't know. Oh God, so right. And I wanna give credit as well for this presentation tonight to Michael Hyatt again, right? I'm just nicking all of Michael's stuff. Michael is the guy who I got the action acronym off. Morning, what's that? Says, hey Kate. Um, yeah, <laughs> if it's a foreign, a foreign kind of uh, concept for you, Kate, um, it can be pretty good if you if you are alive in the morning. Maybe you you are someone who stays up really really late like me, but um, it does it does make me feel so much better when I'm up early. Um, so yeah, Michael Hyatt, who gave me the action acronym, awesome guy. Check out MichaelHyatt.com, particularly if you if you've got a business, he's a business mentor. Um, I'm nicking his stuff tonight as well, just because it's so good. Um, so this presentation where it says like I do this and I do that, this is Michael's words, not mine. For speed, I just had to copy Michael. Michael's morning routine is great. Yeah, Vishal, yeah, so Michael does a, um, a whole kind of 
uh, ritual um, effectively. People are massive in, in, in the world of mentorship and self-development, morning rituals honestly are huge. And I've been through periods of like two and three months at a time where I've done them religiously and it has made a huge impact. And then unfortunately life's got in the way, kind of projects have got in the way that have meant through time differences and stuff, if I'm working with people overseas as well, um, LA is eight hours behind, so if I'm working on the business that I've got out there, sometimes I'll be up to the early hours, you know, Skyping with those guys who it's only, you know, afternoon there. It can get a bit messy, but I really want to make an effort in 2016 to nail the mornings, start getting up, you know, early, at least on a Tuesday and a Thursday, because we're going to be scoping Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So, uh, so yeah, at least a couple of days a week, just, you know, just to get myself back into the routine. So why become a morning person? Oh, did you hear that? That was my funny bone, but that, that wasn't remotely funny. Um, why become a morning person? It says, well, why would you want to do this? Okay, research actually shows, it's not that badly, I'm, I'm well hard, mate. Research actually shows some pretty compelling reasons for this. Okay, morning people, apparently, and I need to look at the science for this. Matt, good evening. Matt, my man, is um, has signed up for Bulletproof Actor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success. And Matt, that is exactly what you are now going to have in 2016. Um, but he says, morning people tend to make more money, be more productive, that's definitely going to be true, be more productive, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure, be healthier and live longer, okay, be more happy and satisfied in their lives. Now, I'm not sure where that science comes from, I said this is Michael Hyatt's words, I'm going to look up some studies though that I can share with you guys, um, but that's what he researched and found out, and you know what? I'm, I'm positive it's true because like I felt it I felt it when I you know like I just said when I'm getting up I feel more productive even if I'm getting the same amount of work done I still feel so much better when I'm doing it in the morning you know and that's because probably scientifically of the circadian rhythms that are in our bodies um, you know the, the rhythms of, of energy and life effectively that say when it's light get up when it's dark go to bed and when we start mucking around with that particularly with artificial light and I'll talk about this in a minute can really affect the quality of your sleep and a chemical called melatonin that's made in your body that helps you recover and actually get to sleep. If you um, if you stay up late with artificial lights, um, we, the artificial lights contain blue light, which is the same um, frequency as daylight, and kind of totally screws around with your, your body's rhythms. Um, so that's why we want to get up in the morning, because it does all those amazing things for us. However, how the hell do we do it okay how do you become a morning person okay how do you actually become a morning person if you aren't one now okay here are nine steps you can take starting today and these are Michael's steps again I can't take credit for these but these are the steps that I'm gonna try out okay we should all be going to bed now that I know <laughs> I know Gemma well I reckon 11's fine because again, science says, well not, there's so many different studies on this, but science says seven hours is absolutely ample. And people actually, there's been a lot of studies done that say six and a half is, is absolutely um, kind of like the sweet spot for, for, you know, for living a, a really you know, quality, quality life with lots of energy. I think I have a superpower to sleep. Maybe that's one of your unique abilities, uh, Sam. So one, change your story. Lee's already gone to sleep. Hopefully the view is that the rest of the people watching this scope haven't gone to sleep. Change your story, okay? So many people say, I'm not a morning person, as though it were an immutable fact, okay? Could it be that there's no biological evidence for this? What if you discovered that this was merely a preference and years of practice, okay? What would happen if you changed the story and began telling yourself, I am a morning person? Usually, we adjust our behavior to fit our story. So. I see this happen in so many areas of people's lives. This is the same. These are the, you know, I'm not a morning person. These are the same people who say things like, oh yeah, but I'm just big boned, or you know, um, I, uh, I was never destined to have any money, or I'm not this, I'm not that. They give themselves, you know, I'm not lucky. God, that's one. Yeah, but I'm not lucky like you. What? Nonsense, shut up, right? Um, you, you kind of like, we, we talked about this, our stories define us, this, the, the, our stories define our behaviour. Bulletproof actor, literally, the whole process is about rewriting your bullshit limiting life story that you're currently living and it's, it helps you recraft a limitless empowering life story that will affect the way you behave for the rest of your life. So when you tell yourself you aren't something, you effectively, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, you effectively just become that thing, okay? So if your if self-talk at the moment, in any area of your life, 
is telling you things like, I'm not lucky, I'm not this, I'm not that, well, that happens to other people, doesn't happen to me, I'm not a morning person, I'm big bone, any of those things, then that's actually what you're going to be because your self-talk really di dictates who you are and what you are. So stop doing that. So for me, I'm definitely going to start saying I am a morning person because I think that's a bit of a limiting belief of mine for a while. I thought, well, maybe I do just, you know, I enjoy staying up late. Maybe I'm just, you know, this is just how I work. It's not at all. It's just what we tell ourselves. I've got better when I've had to work earliest, uh, but I've not been converted yet to this premise. Well, maybe, Sam, maybe this month. So, change your story is Michael's, uh, oh, earlies. You work better when you get earlies. Okay, in terms of shifts. Right, okay. Yeah, I used to quite like that. I, well, God, I hated my job in retail about 10 years ago, but I did quite like when we did stock takes really early in the morning, like 5, and I could go home at like 11 a.m. and only like a six-hour shift. Um, a, I got home early, but B, again, it felt like, you know, you got the world to yourself. Two, okay, once we've changed our story, we need to determine what's at stake, okay? This is Michael's words, okay? Whenever I want to change anything in my life or accomplish a significant goal, I start by artic articulating to myself why it is important. This is huge with your goal setting as well, guys. You need compelling reasons for why your goals are important. Write down on a sheet of paper what becoming a morning person would make possible. Then conversely, write down what is at risk if you don't, okay? This is great to do when you are motivated. However, um, its real value is to keep you going when you've lost that first blush of enthusiasm. So we all have, and we've looked at a scope before on creating habits and something called habit gravity. The first few days we're motivated and we're like, yeah, come on, we can do it. And we're probably getting up at 6 a.m. every morning and we're feeling great. And then gradually, kind of by about day 10, you start hitting something called habit gravity where it starts pulling you back down to your old ways and you start going back to doing what you used to do. You end up kind of... Um, resenting that new habit because uh, as human beings we move towards, towards pleasure, we move away from pain and maybe that new habit is causing you some pain. We need to stick with that habit for at least 21 days. I like to do 30 and then you reach something called escape velocity where you actually miss that habit if you stop doing it. So what you want to do is write down and determine yeah, what, you know, what's at stake when you're creating this habit. So for instance, if you work a part-time job and you know to support your acting career or you know or whatever you're doing um, and you start at say 12 uh, noon and you're not getting up till 11 then what's at stake well you know what you may be if you're working 12 till 7 12 till 8 or whatever maybe you can't work out that day okay and that might be really important to you it should be really important to you because it's a huge part of your life it'll make you feel great you know um, fitness I'm a huge advocate of fitness and I think a lot of success the foundation for it is in health and fitness feeling good about yourself you know looking good and, and feeling your best uh, enables you to perform at your best and if you're getting up at say 11 you go well I've only got an hour before I'm in work there's no way you might even be at our breakfast you know maybe just it's just breakfast that's at stake uh, but particularly if there's morning activities that are at stake that you're gonna miss if you don't get up get them down on paper okay get down what you have got to lose by um, by not doing that and that's gonna motivate you when the habit gravity starts pulling uh, you know starts pulling you back down um, so yeah, write down. It says that yeah, of course. What you know, what it makes possible. Maybe it makes new activities possible for you as well that weren't previously possible. Maybe it means you can get through a unit of bulletproof actor, unstoppable confidence, infinite success. Because all videos are only around about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes. There's 33 of them, so there's a hell of a lot of content. But it might mean you can get a couple of videos in before you start your day, which is going to totally enhance your life. Three, okay, so one and two, we have changed our story, we've determined what's at stake, and then three, we've got to start planning it, okay? Plan everything in your life, schedule it, and it gets done. Tony Robbins says that, if you want something to get done, schedule it. So after years of waking up early, okay, this is Michael again, this has become an ingrained habit for me, I wake up at 5 a.m. without an alarm. So mate, oh, you know what I've done here, guys? <laughs> I've just realized, um, that this is for the slide for the, this is the next this is the title for the slide that I should have had but this is the text from the next slide which is use an alarm okay so I can tell you a little bit about what planning your sleep should have said so planning your sleep the 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 slide for the, the downloads of the PDF that will be on the replay will be correct, okay? But planning your sleep, Michael was saying basically how important it is to figure out how much sleep kind of like you need to plan. So if you want to start getting up early, you're not going to be able to go to bed probably at the time that you go to bed now. So for me, wow, if I'm getting up at 6am, I'm not going to be going to bed 
Um, I'm sleep, sleep deprived. I am. I am I'm copy and paste deprived. Lee. I've been on a computer all day. Sleep deprivation. Everybody's giving me gyp now. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, so you're not going to be able to go to bed. I'm not going to be able to go to bed at half past three in the morning and get up at six. Okay, that's not going to be possible. So I need to plan my sleep. Now, I think just through life and knowing myself and my body, I can go easily off seven hours sleep. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty cool with that. Seven hours is, is good enough for me. So I would go, right, well, if I'm going to get up at six, then I need to be in bed by 11, which gives me 40 minutes. Okay, it's 20 past 10 now. We'll easily do this. So if I'm in bed by 11 o'clock, then I should absolutely seven hours later be pretty much right as rain at 6 a.m. so really just plan your sleep plan you know off previous experience how much sleep you need you're not going to be able to uh, to go to bed at the time you're going to bed now um, and maybe you know to start with you just plan um, that for just a few days a week you know it's baby steps um, somebody on the Facebook group before wrote that their one of their goals was to get up at 8 a.m. or before 8 a.m. every day you know maybe you don't want to go for six straight away but just baby steps plan your sleep okay but plan it um, to the uh, you know the amount of hours that, that work for you I guess it's different for uh, for every you know for everybody um, and gradually you know some people some people tell me oh I need 10 hours you don't right you definitely don't give me some hearts if you've woken up and you probably do this all the time felt great at say 7 a.m fell back asleep woke up at 9 and felt absolutely dreadful like you just can't be bothered getting up and it's like what I don't understand I felt brilliant two hours ago how do, how do I feel so bad and it's because you can oversleep you can absolutely oversleep so um, work out you know for you what you know what number of hours you need and then plan that okay four the um, the slide that we should have seen a minute ago okay plan no not plan your sleep we just done that one <laughs> use, use an alarm this is like so obvious guys but there's a little bit at the end here which I do when I'm in hotels and I'm um, say I'm doing an acting job and I know that if I'm if I'm late I'm totally gonna get killed um, it says uh, it says after years of waking early this has become an ingrained habit for me I wake up at 5 a.m. without an alarm Michael's just showing off there so it's amazing how consistent this is sometimes when I don't want it to be but if you haven't been a morning person until now you'll likely need to use an alarm sounds obvious but very true it's part of training yourself mentally and physically now this is the key whether you use the alarm on your smartphone or dedicate it or a dedicated alarm put it on the other side of the room so you have to get up to turn it off who does that I always do it like say if I'm on important jobs because it's like I know I've got to get up I'm guilty of not doing it at home own up I'll put my hand up own up if your phone ends up generally underneath your pillow or next to your bed um, those early's killed killed Sam I don't, it's okay you do that you do that already that's awesome if you do that already that's brilliant um, uh, Sam snoozes, <laughs> snoozes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I I very often sometimes my room's only only quite small. Um, you know, unless I'm charging it in a different plug over the side of the room, it'll often end up um, next to me if I'm not careful. And then uh, and then it is easy to snooze. You want to be getting up other side of the room, bang, turn it off. It's Kate does that if it's if you have an important job. Yeah, I do that. I only do it though if I have an important job. I need to do it more regularly at home. I say it's definitely one of uh, one of my goals. This one is critical, and, and this is I've been looking. This is something I've been looking at the science of because my, one of my business partners, a guy called Mark, is massive on this. Uh, my daughter has me up at 5:45 most mornings. Well, you've got your own human alarm clock there, Gemma. You don't even you don't even need an alarm clock. You've uh, you've got your own there. Um, yeah, my business partner Mark is, is huge on this. He's, he's, uh, he's massive in, in kind of lifestyle and, and well-being and high performance. And um, as I was talking about lights a minute ago, so I've got all these lights on in this room right now. I wake up without alarm. Even when I use an alarm, I wake up early before it goes off. It never hits snooze. I need about ten minutes to come around though. So you're all great. Look at you. You're all just just perfect on this. Maybe I'm just I'm just the, I'm the one who needs to learn off you about this stuff. Um, so yeah, we're talking about lights. I've got all these lights on here, okay? Artificial light at night, it, um, it gives off this blue 
light, okay, is that the wavelength is blue. Now, what happens is, in our, our, our as we are just human beings, we're not nocturnal animals. We, we, our circadian rhythms mean we get up in the daylight and we go to sleep when it is dark. Artificial light screws up at night time with that. Now, what you can buy is you can buy something, I don't know if you give me some hearts or say yes if you've ever seen these, blue light blocking glasses and they're filtered orange glasses that you can put on at night time when it goes dark and it actually filters out all of the blue light so all of that daylight it filters out so it will make things a little bit darker but generally you can still you know you can still you can still see and get on with yourself you can still work on a computer you can still work on your smartphone tablet anything like that but any blue light that's given off it actually stops it um, from you know being absorbed by your eyes now what happens when you stop absorbing blue light okay your body starts producing a chemical called melatonin now melatonin is what gets you to sleep and makes you feel drowsy you have a twilight app on your phone as well yes you can you can also use something called flux as well you get that for your Mac and PC and for your your smartphones which will actually put an orange kind of filter over everything so it stops that blue light being um, you know being emitted uh, now melatonin helps you get to sleep okay and it actually kind of really rejuvenates you during the night now the, the height of melatonin production really only starts I think it's either two or it's two to four hours after you've been asleep so if you went to bed and say when it went dark say, say you went to bed when it went dark at like eight o'clock you would be in bed for four hours. By midnight, you're gonna be in full production of melatonin. If you're not getting up till like six or seven, you're getting six or seven full hours of, of all that melatonin that's rejuvenating your body and making you feel better. Um, what happens is, is we idiots like me, have got three massive lights on here, I periscope at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, I absorb all this blue light, I then go, I'm not, I'm not making any, any melatonin because my body thinks it's daylight. I then go to bed, and then I fall asleep. Four hours after falling asleep, my body starts making melatonin. Now, if I'm only having seven hours sleep, that means I'm only getting three hours production a night, as opposed to those people getting six or seven. I tried the whole no computer phone, fall bed and slept worse. I think it's not necessarily the, um, the activities of doing that. It's just not absorbing the light, Sam. I don't think it's anything about being stimulated by watching films or anything like that. You know, I have no quibbles with that at all. Audio books, you know, I... Uh, Oh, and I always drink coffee. Very true. Yeah, I should stop doing this at 10 o'clock, shouldn't I? Or get decaf. But yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I, I don't think it's the actual activity that you need to worry about. It's actually absorbing the blue light. So you can get blue light blocking glasses to wear at night. I'm going to try these as a bit of an experiment as well. Um, green tea leaf, exactly. And, um, and then, you know, you're going to get better quality sleep. So you should feel far more rejuvenated when you wake up. Now, equally, if you want to wake up, though, Okay, if you want to get up at 6am, as soon as you get up, this green tea has caffeine, yeah it does a little bit doesn't it? Turn on all the lights, okay, the environment provides subtle clues to your body so it knows how to respond. When it gets dark your body naturally begins preparing itself for sleep unless you have conditioned it otherwise. When it gets light you naturally begin waking up, okay, if you want to uh, jump start this process and signal to your body that it's time to get up simulate full daylight turn on all the lights in the room so if you've got a partner <laughs> you're gonna have to start getting them up at 6 a.m. as well because they might not be happy if you're just turning on the uh, the lights as soon as you wake up but yeah if you want to get yourself out of that sleep get all the lights on okay if you want to get yourself into that sleep start blocking this blue light out okay I'll, I'll send some links to people where you can get those glasses from I'll test it as well I might look stupid but I'll do a periscope one night with the glasses on um, number six, Michael's tip number six, set out all your clothes. Now I do this on a Sunday, well a Saturday night for Sunday morning. I do a half marathon every Sunday morning and this is one of the things that gets me up and out. So if you're groggy when you get up, the fewer decisions you need to make, the better. Make the decision about what to wear the night before. If you get dressed immediately, it's also less likely that you're going to take your clothes off and get back into bed. Since I exercise in the morning, I put my workout clothes, including my shoes, I put them on and then lace them up. That's my call, not my words, although I do do that on a Sunday. So I have all my running gear lay out on a Saturday night so that when I wake up on a Sunday, even if I'm feeling a bit, oh, you know, I basically have very few decisions to make. I just get my shorts on, t-shirt, socks, shoes, um, put my contact lenses in and boom, you know, I'm out. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's just very, very straightforward. I'm not fumbling around looking for things, going, oh, where are my shorts and giving myself an excuse to just get back into bed where it's warm. So get your clothes out. Seven, you'll love this, I do drink a cup of coffee. Okay, at various times Michael's eliminated coffee from his diet he says, however after considerable research I'm, I'm convinced it's fine in moderation. 
I don't know if I have it in moderation. A cup of night's alright. In fact, it's probably beneficial. Well, hey, regardless, it is definitely beneficial for me first thing in the morning. I love coffee, says Ross. Just added that to the slide. So coffee's good. And also, check out, guys. Um, let me see if I can if I can get this book without knocking over the uh, the iPhone. Get this book. You don't like the taste? Are you mentally? <laughs> I'm only kidding, mate. Um, get something else that's maybe got a caffeine boost. Then tea's, tea's you know got caffeine in. Uh, bulletproof diet. Okay, bulletproof um, Dave Asprey. This is oh, it's massive in LA. This guy, but he does something called bulletproof coffee, and that's where coffee is made with um, something called MCT oil. Um, coffee, um, bulletproof coffee is roasted to a, to a lesser uh, temperature so it's not got as many carbons in it and you know it's supposed to be better for you. Um, but he makes it, rather than with milk, he makes it with um, organic grass-fed butter. It's not the butter that's grass-fed, it's the cows obviously that are grass-fed that <laughs> make the butter. Um, and you mix it all together. So rather than having milk, makes it with this butter. Now you'd imagine that you go, oh, it's probably greasy and really fatty. Um, it's not. It tastes amazing um, and it really, really, you know, it's healthy fats. It really gives you that kickstart in the morning. And uh, I was having it again in LA. Um, it's being made for me, so it was easier then. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to make. It's not just pouring milk in. You have to blend it up if you've got a blender. But it's awesome. I've seen that on It's This Morning, or maybe on This Morning. Uh, yeah, it, honestly, it's great. It's really, really good. It's not something that, you know, you need to shy away from because it's full of fat or anything like that. It's healthy fats. It's organic fats, uh, which are really good, really, really good for us, and, um, and it really gives you focus. That, that MCT oil that's in it really gives you focus as well. She's going to partnership with him, Bulletproof Coffee for the Bulletproof Factor. Yeah, I know, I know. It's meant to be one hour after you get up. This, uh, it says, well, it's this, it's this morning. Um, awesome, well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, get up, have a shower, um, do what you need to do, have a Bulletproof Coffee. This isn't. It's all right, though. Right, eight, we're nearly there. I've only got one more point after this. We've talked about this before, but I love it. Enlist an accountability partner. Um, whether it's a mentor, a peer, find someone who understands the value of accountability. Okay, explain your goal, tell him or her why it's important to you, and then give him permission to hold you, uh, hold your feet to the fire. When I was in college, so when Michael was in college, a friend and I wanted to get up early to study for a class, so we called one another at 5 a.m. to make sure the other one was awake. We did pretty well in class two. Who's done this? They say water is good to drink before anything else. Get up and have a, have a glass of water. Yeah, water's key. And the quality of the water is key. Don't just have any water. If you can get alkaline water, you can get machines that um, process your tap water and make it alkaline water. Really, really high quality water for you. Um, when your body is like, what's your body, 90% water? You know, I think it's pretty important what sort of water you're putting into your body, don't you? Yeah, I did that one pint of warm water with lemon. Interesting, never tried that. Um, so yeah, an accountability partner. Um, who's done that when you're going on a holiday dead, dead early? When I was going on my, on my lad's holidays as a kid, and we'd be getting, well, like as an 18 year old, you'd be going, got a 5 a.m. flight, you'd ring your mates at 3 a.m., wouldn't you? Are you up? Just make sure you're up. Can't stand water, but tried it, felt amazing. Yeah, honestly, gonna, it's gonna do an awful lot of, you know, um, detoxifying in your body, you know, just flush out a lot of toxins. The more good quality water you can have, the better. Um, you know, big advocate of that. Um, so do that, get an accountability partner, use the Bulletproof Actor Facebook group. Maybe we should all message each other in the morning as soon as we're up to go, just to proof, because it'll be a timestamp on Facebook, just to prove what time you're up. Don't go back to bed though once you've done it. Uh, number nine, right, and this is what I want to know, who's going to do this challenge with me, okay, because I aim to start making this part of my life. I'm going to try and implement everything that we've talked about here. Like I say, this isn't my stuff that I'm preaching, this is stuff that I'm doing, okay, this is Michael Hyatt's plan um, to how to implement this into your life. Um, I'm just telling you guys as well because it'd be cool if you wanted to do it with me. Nine, commit to 21 days. Okay, according to many psychologists, this is how long it takes to form a habit. I like to go 30, just to be on the safe side. Michael goes 21. I recommend you become a morning person for three weeks and then decide whether or not this uh, will become a permanent part of your life. If not, you, at least you gave it a try. Okay, if so, you now have a new habit that can serve you well for the rest of your life. So, who's with me? Say yes, say 6 a.m. actually, don't say yes, say 6 a.m. if you're gonna try this at least one day a week for now. Monday, Wednesday and Thursday you'll do it. And try not to snooze. I just, I just want a commitment of one day for now. Say 6 a.m. if you're gonna do it. 6 a.m., Carl's in. Carl's in it, doing it. P.S., those are the days I have to be in at seven. 
Oh, well, you need to be up at six, Sam, definitely. Who else? Lee Petcher, are you doing this or what? Nina, come on. Who's getting up at six at least one day a week? That can be your, like, like your bulletproof day. Your day where you, uh, you know, you get the most done. I have to, for tour. What, you're up anyway? This isn't even gonna be, <laughs> this isn't even gonna be a challenge for many of you. You can mess our body up getting up at different times. Yeah, well you can know, hopefully what you would do though is, is extend that from one day, if it's working, and go right, I'm now, you know, my body's getting used to it a little bit, I'm now gonna start getting up two days a week, three days a week. I'm at least gonna do this moving forward straight away, um, at least Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, but that's, you know, so that's tomorrow, that's, oh my God, that's tomorrow. So I will be doing this tomorrow, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, do it if you want to make it part of your of your life moving forward. If you don't want to make it, actually, if you're not going to try and make it part of your life, um, don't, I wouldn't recommend you doing it. Um, I'm usually up by eight as I'm a poor sleeper. Bugger that for a game of soldiers. <laughs> says Nina. Well, at least you're very honest, Nina. Very, very good of you. Um, it says, will you become a morning person? Lee's up for it. And to be honest, the real issue here is not becoming a morning person per se. Okay, what I really want to communicate is you have more power than you think. You don't have to be stuck in a rut. Okay, if you're intentional, you can build the habits necessary to accomplish your goals, even if it means becoming a morning person. And so I'm aiming for it. It's one of my goals for 2016. Um, you can apply this kind of stuff to any goals though, you know, it's, it really is just about being intentional with what you want, figuring out, like we said earlier, why you want to do it, what's at risk if you don't do it, you know, and then figuring out some very simple, you know, brain dead simple strategies that are going to make it as easy as possible. Those little things like you know, laying out your clothes and make sure you don't have as many decisions to make in the morning if you're groggy, turning on the lights, things that are so simple require very little effort. Uh, you know, but really, really have a, uh, a big impact. So that's mine. I will keep you posted on how I get on, <laughs> and whether it becomes part of my life. It would be so much easier, wouldn't it, if, if we lived in a, in a climate that was so hot and sunny. In LA, it was so easy to do this because it was just a beautiful environment to be in. Um, but in the UK, it's a little bit different, but I'm gonna try my hardest. What other goals did you guys make last week or, or are you planning on making? Share a couple of those with us, just so I know what you're aiming for. No, I won't become a morning person on my AM off, but we'll try and get better when I do get up early. Awesome, yeah, it's just baby steps, Sam. I'm not forcing everybody to go, get up at 6 AM every day. Like I say, it was just something that I, um, that, that I thought uh, it would help me. <laughs> you guys could support as well, you know. I thought if a few of us are getting up, it might make it a little bit easier, and I'm held accountable by you guys then. But share some other goals just before we go. Uh, we'll give it three minutes. Uh, we'll stay on until 20 to, uh, 20 to 11. Uh, then I've got 20 minutes to get to bed. But uh, yeah, share some of your other goals that you wanted to make for 2016. Um, and I'll try and I mean, maybe do some scopes on those this week or next week, you know, the things that maybe help you achieve those goals as well. Obviously, check out bulletproofactor.com. Get your invite for Bulletproof Factor Unstoppable Confidence Infinite Success, which is going to launch on the 18th of January. If you're part of the Facebook group, there's a post on there where if you leave a comment, I will PM, I'll private message you a link so you can buy it right now. My man Matt, and I don't know who else because I can't check, has already enrolled. There's two types of course. There's an independent study course you can do on your own. You get access to 33 videos. It's over four hours of video content. You get over an hour of audio content, five PDF books, bonus podcasts. Uh, that's the independent study course. You go through it at your own pace. Um, then there's, Lee, you can be my accountability partner. Awesome. Um, and then there's a VIP package where you get all that plus you get five weekly webinars. So you get one webinar a week for five weeks starting in February that drills down really deep into each of the units. There's open Q&A. We can all get together, chat, get to know each other, and you get access to a VIP Facebook group, which is only for alumni of the course. So that's going to be something that's basically used throughout the study of the course um, and then forevermore, you know, for people who have been on the course to help new people um, who come to the course and, you know, and get, you know, get better and better uh, in the future. Um, so that's the VIP version. Check it out. If you want an invite, though, bulletproofactor.com. Seriously, it will change your life. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't think it has changed your life, I will give you every single penny back. No quibble whatsoever. So no one's sharing any goals with me. What goals did you set or have you not set them yet? Let me know just one thing that you would like to achieve this year moving forward, just so that it will help me plan future scopes. 
um, get seen for at least four TV roles by the end of April. Wow, well that's an awesome goal, Nina. You could be even more narrow on that though. So where we were saying about being objective and narrow in, um, in the action acronym or in the SMART acronym, it would be the specific part of it. Um, drink more water for Sam. Um, you could go, okay, well I want, I want you know, four roles, um, but you could either um, you specify the programs, if say they were, they were recurring programs like the soaps, um, you know, they could be in particular genres. You might specify the amount of lines you would have. So you go, right, I want four roles that are at least five lines each uh, before April. Um, any of that kind of thing, just to drill down even, even more and more specific. So you can, you know, be in communication with your agent. Just let them know exactly what you want. Water is mine too. Carl wants more water. Awesome. That's a good goal, absolutely. Like I say, I'm sure your body's 90% water. It is up there in, in that kind of percentage anyway. So let's be, um, let's be re really mindful of the, of the water we put into our bodies. Um, awesome, Nina, yeah, yeah, get so, so specific. On these uh, on these goals, it just it kind of just helps you get clarity, and you know, and it helps you drive forward when you know exactly what you want, and um, it might just give you that little bit more clarity to uh, to tackle it, you know, in a more specific way. I guess um, you can target more individual casting directors um, and really just go after it. But good luck with that. I really hope you do it. It'll be interesting to uh, you know to, to see your progress in the Facebook group. Carl Lee, do I remember you guys? Go to Actor Tribe. I'm starting this term. So Lee doesn't. Carl goes to Actor Tribe. Um, I don't know if you did do it, Lee. Did you do? Did you do Actor Tribe? How about leading role in the new Star Wars film? Well, they're casting. They're casting episode eight right now. Um, so so yeah, let's try and <laughs> try and get a role in Star Wars. That would be absolutely awesome. And um, Sam, Actor Tribe is awesome. Lee Boardman, one of the most genuine, nicest, just decent guys I've ever met in my life. I'm a massive fan of his. I'm going to go into Actor Tribe later on this month as well to do another talk on goal setting actually. Carl, you'll have one up on everyone else because you already know a lot of the stuff about it. Um, but yeah, I'm really going to help people kind of get clear within within that group as well on, uh, on what they want for this year. Uh, but Actor Tribe, can't recommend it enough. Lee's, these guys got the biggest heart in the world. Uh, even though I shan't be getting up at stupid o'clock. What do you say, Nina? I missed it. Something that's, I didn't miss your, your comment before that, but I hope it was... Oh no, you were just talking about your, your goals of those roles, but even though you're not getting up before six, that's fine. I looked into it after your interview with him. Yeah, honestly, it's good. If you've not seen the interview, guys, you're an actor, go to actonthis.tv. Uh, I think Lee's on the homepage at the moment, or click into the broadcast section. You'll be able to um, watch the replay of the broadcast I did with him. It's a couple of hours long, uh, but it was awesome. Uh, he's a really, really great guy, and uh, he gives off a lot of knowledge and wisdom in that broadcast, so, uh, so do check it out. So that kind of wraps it up, guys. Hope that's been useful for you. I am absolutely going to be trying to get up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll let you know on Wednesday night scope um, what we, uh, what you know, kind of what the results were and um, what I'll be doing moving, moving forward, how well I did. Um, and we'll be scoping, yeah, Wednesday night, 10 p.m. I've no idea what we're going to be scoping about. Um, please tweet me at Ross A. Grant um, or tweet Act On This. It's at Act On This TV. Um, and uh, and let me know, yeah, let me know what you would like us to talk about. I will plan a scope around you by all means. If you've got something interesting to talk about, about mind hacks, motivation, um, you know, then uh, then then ask away, and I will do my best to uh, to give you the answers. And then Friday, guys, it's going to be Bulletproof Book Club. I've had like six or seven books over Christmas now as gifts. I don't know which one that we're going to be looking at on Friday. Um, but we're going to start getting back into the book club. It's going to be a book, no doubt, that will absolutely enhance your life and career if you follow the lessons and guidance within it. Um, I'll give you a few sneak peeks at that in the Facebook group later this week. Please your tweet is at six, so we know <laughs> you are up. Right, okay, you know what? I will put a, twi I will put a tweet out from my Twitter account at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. I promise you, I'll do that. <laughs> That's being held accountable, isn't it? And if I don't, then you can give me a forfeit on Wednesday night scope, what I have to do like live on Friday scope or something. That's what I'm doing on Wednesday. I will miss Wednesday as I'm out. No worries, Kate. Try for fry. Awesome. You can always um, check out the replays. I, re I upload the replays of all of these to actsonthis.tv, so definitely uh, check them out there. But thank you so much for joining tonight. I really appreciate people spending their time with me. Um, so awesome. I'm off. I'm going to go and see how Bulletproof Actor is doing. If you are an actor and you really seriously want to change your life this year, and I mean this like from the bottom of my heart, okay, the course that I've created is, is literally the most powerful strategies and skills that I've implemented into my life over the last eight years, distilled down into like five hours of content. Uh, no preset in Twitter, I won't leave. 
um, and I've put that all into one course, okay, that if you do go through, I'm so convinced, this is why I don't, I don't mind kind of, you know, banging on about it over and over again, I'm so convinced if people do it, that you're going to have such an impact on your life, um, and if it doesn't, absolutely, I will give you the price of the course back, no quibble whatsoever, I'm not a shark out to make loads of money, I put my heart and soul into this product, and I just want to see it changing people's lives, um, so uh, do check it out, bulletproofactor.com, get your invite, it's going to launch on the 18th of January, or if you're part of the Facebook group, leave a message in the Facebook group, at, uh, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash bulletproof actor and I'll send you an early invite link um, but yeah I'm so excited to see how people use it and, and what it does for your life seriously I think it's gonna make big waves this year thank you so much for watching I'll see if I can end this scope elegantly yes I can I've not pulled down notifications on my iPhone and ruined it all and I'll see you guys on Wednesday night 10 p.m. be there like or just or, or be in bed because you're getting up at 6 a.m.